Hi, welcome to my YouTube. Today I'm going to show you how to thread an oversized barrel. But before I do that, I want to talk about muzzle devices and why we need them. Besides, it looks cool on a tactical rifle. Well, it's because they actually perform two functions. Basically, two groups. Both perform different tasks, although some hybrids will try to do both. To my left, these hide flashes. They're called flash hiders, aka flash suppressors, and flash eliminators. In broad daylight, the task doesn't seem so obvious, but it's the fall now, and if you want to go shooting after work, very likely it'll be in low light or by floodlight. Now, if you haven't shot in the darkness before with a flash hider, what you're going to see is a big ball of flame about the size of um, a square meter in front of a muzzle. That'll play havoc to your vision. Your pupil will want to shut right away. It's quite similar to somebody standing with a flash camera repeatedly taking pictures of you two feet away. Pretty soon you're going to start seeing blotches of light. Yeah, that's no fun. Now if that's no fun for a civilian, just imagine for a soldier it's actually life savings. Because even in broad daylight without a flash hider, it, the enemy can see your flash a little bit and it will give your position away. It's life savings. Now, to my right, these reduce recoil. They're called muzzle brake, which also includes compensators. If I could use a car as an analogy, suppose a hurricane force wind is pushing on your car backwards and you're in the car, you automatically apply the brake. That's where the name brake came from. You're minimizing the rearward movement or if you could direct, redirect the force wind elsewhere, it's also considered a brake. With the advent of CNC, there's an explosion of muzzle devices to choose from. It seems a lot of companies are trying to build a better mousetrap. I doubt most of us can even tell the difference of 5% in performance. Therefore, some will succeed and some will become obsolete very quickly. This isn't rocket science or formula racing where micron seconds will dictate the winner from second place. But it is physics science. Newton, there's third law. For every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. So why don't we go through these muzzle devices, these are for my VZ58, and discuss them individually. So let's begin. Okay, I'm back. Why don't we start off with flash hiders first, okay? This one is a uh, copy of the A1 birdcage, that's normally an M16 and uh, AR made to fit the VZ-58. Um, as you can see, there are six slots uh, of equal size, equal distance, and uh, this is very easy um, to put on. You don't have to uh, time it. You basically would fit in one of these, and, and off you go. There, there's a lot of advantage to this. Now, in the 60s, this replaced the three prong uh, on the M16. And uh, from what I can see on YouTube, the three prong and the four prong flash hiders do a much better job than the birdcage. Um, the reason why it was replaced, apparently, uh, soldiers were getting these prongs caught in branches and they were misusing them uh, to cut. Uh, you know, bob wires and all sorts of stuff. But anyway, if you can imagine uh, a three prong, these, these are prongs and basically they uh, connected the prong in the front so there's no chance of uh, getting caught in branches and all that stuff. So basically they took the three prong and made it into a bird cage. So if I were to cut, you know, one eighth of an inch off, you would then have six prongs, okay? So yeah, these are pretty good um, flash hiders, although, you know, the prongs, the three prong, four prongs does a better job, but this is smaller, lighter, 
and of obviously quite cheap to make. So um, these are pretty good. Now this was subsequently replaced by A2 and what the A2, the difference between this and the A2, basically they covered this one of them up. Okay, so basically you have five. You have five. Now that changes the job of a flash hider. It becomes a little bit of a compensator. So if this was if this was a scale, if A1 stays here, well then A2 would be over here because it does some compensating. And that was the reason why they replaced the A1 with the A2. I don't have an A2 here, but I, I drew some graph here to, to show you what it looks like. Okay, this is A1. As you can see, the gas comes out. You're looking right at it like this. The gas comes out at equally. Okay, and um, if you look from the side view, like this, you can see these slots are cut in an angle is to ease the flow of gases so if and also it's not abrupt when the bullet is at this point and as it moves further the opening becomes bigger and bigger and bigger it's trying to ease the flow of gas and the gas is and this is tapered so the gas comes out it's not trying to disrupt the gas it's trying to ease the gas out and because the gas will be traveling faster than the bullet because the bullet has weight and the gas doesn't um, it tends to surpass the bullet and that's why they have this um, slow opening basically and um, now if they were to make this instead of in an angle if they were to make the straight then this part will act as a break and then with the gas if this is like this for instance or here let's take this as an example then the gas would actually hit here and then bounce off then it's acting like a break but then when it comes this way it's going to collide with the gas that's coming out this way and then of course it's going to disrupt the, uh, the the function of a hider so that's why that's why they're designed this way now obviously the prongs would do a better job because you don't have this part and the gas just flows right out this is the A2 as I said the A2 one of the slot is covered up one at the bottom so as Newton law says this equals this equals out so it doesn't move anywhere and that one equals that but with this gas forcing coming up it's forcing this barrel down and that's what you also want is because of the barrel rise so this acts on the barrel rise also there's another feature why they went with A2 is because a soldier will most likely be uh, on a prone position on near dirt and apparent uh, and with, with this pointing down it would stir up dirt and so that was another reason why they went from A1 to A2 okay next this flash hider is made in Czech Republic by a company called FSN who also make uh, VZ58 and uh, this is very similar to the A2 birdcage. Uh, you can see there's five equal slots of equal size. The bottom is closed off like the, um, like the A2 birdcage. Uh, the only difference, um, it's, uh, it's a bit longer. And also because it's a bit longer, it doesn't need such a big opening. It has a smaller opening. Um, I would say when I put a bullet to the opening there is a gap of uh, I would say about four millimeter okay 
uh, that's quite a still quite a big opening now this is a modified FN FAL flash hider it's British and it has three ports on the side and um, a decade ago there was a flood of these flash hiders around and uh, they were selling as cheap as a dollar and everybody was buying these uh, they were converting them to fit the Visa 58 even though the thread is 916 by 24 right hand after you cut it it fits here I'll show you this is my Visa 58 It has that uh, sniper look. Now, originally, and for a dollar, that's uh, it's worth converting. Now, obviously, these uh, FN foul, the, these um, flash hiders was designed uh, back in the 50s. Obviously, they work and um, this is what it originally looked like okay before I modified it I had to cut this part off and take out the bayonet lug and um, it has three as you can see three ports two coming down in an angle and one on top this is um, has no compensator in it because three equal size, equal distance, they cancel each other out. Okay, but it's still able to not divert gas to the ground where it can stir up some dirt. Okay, now why is it this is longer? It's because it's a 7.62 by 51 NATO, so you need longer to uh, dispel the gas. Not bad. Now, I want to talk a little bit about why this is the British, but the Canadian and the Australian went a different route. They decided for their FN fowl to do more of a birdcage. There's five. This is more like, a, like an A2. Again, the bottom. This also does not stir up dirt, but also this is where the bayonet would be and uh, this is what the Canadian and the uh, Australian muzzle uh, flash eliminator looks like. Th these were all selling for a dollar. Okay. Now the exit port is also quite big. It's about three millimeter, uh, bigger than the bullet. Now let's talk about muzzle brake <clears throat> this is a standard CZ muzzle brake for the VZ58 now they chose to do it a little different these are more compensators okay when I what do they compensate well they're like um, here I'll show you what they actually do they divert gas off in an angle okay like this and the bottom and they have three of them so as soon as the bullet start passing it start to work as a compensator it pushes the barrel rise down and the reason why they chose this pattern is so it's not in the way vision of the uh, shooter okay that's what it does so the CZ the company decided that the compensator is more important and they put six holes this way and the last bigger hole this works as a as a brake it goes directly across 
okay, the the force of opposite direction cancel each other out, and I divert the gas that normally push against the shooter to the side, so it's reducing recoil. This one, these six ports, what it does, it pushes the barrel rise down. Now, the exit port, and this is what's common with the brake, is that they have smaller exit port. And, and the distance is about one millimeter. While these ones are, this is about four millimeter. So the exit port for the flash hiders are bigger because they want the gas to, it doesn't matter, they, they're not concerned about brakes, so they want the gas to come out as easy as, as possible. Um, so, next one is, um, I can't recall who makes this, but what they decided, I mean, at first you think that this is, oh, this is just a 100% brake, uh, but it's actually not. It is also a compensator, and the way you can tell, if you look in the side, oh, actually look in the bottom, the bottom is bigger and the top is smaller, and closer to the top, it angles off, so like this. Okay, this is the bottom, which is horizontal to each other, but then the top here, the gas is going off in a, in a V-shape. So it's, it's using the, the brake and the compensator at the same time. Um, so basically, it gases oppose each other, and also gases going off in an angle, not blocking the vision of the shooter. So this is, uh, I don't know how good that is because it's hard to control uh, how much gas is going to the top or going to the bottom, you know, one doesn't really know. Um, however, these are called baffles and that's what happens with the gas. When they come rushing out, they want to pass the bullet. When the bullet is at this point, it actually rushes out and hit the baffle, okay, and then it pushes the um, the gun forward, and that's what the job of the baffle is to push the uh, the gun forward. But to do that, it has to have smaller exit port because it wants the gas to come out off the side. It's trying to divert the gas to the side and not follow the bullet. Now this one is quite similar to, I guess, it's somewhere in between of these two because it regulates how much compensated does, okay, but it also compensate and divert gases at the same time at each port. Okay, it's slightly different, but there you go, it has three baffles and three uh, compensator port and um, and the gas again it goes like this a little bit different than these two these two um, doesn't hinder the uh, this is exactly like this so this is in the vision of the shooter so slightly different than these two. Oh, one more thing regarding this break I bought this online recently thinking that these baffles point backwards like this in a 45 degrees angle on both sides but when I arrived it wasn't the case because I can tell the baffles are completely horizontal but if there was it would be the most effective in terms of reducing recoil because with gas coming backwards it's pushing the rifle forward now why would everybody want that if that's the most effective way to reduce recoil is because there's a drawback to that and the drawback is when gases comes backwards towards the shooter it causes concussion 
and not to mention if you have a buddy who's uh, shooting beside you he's gonna get a face full of gas so yeah that's not a good thing but to summarize the brakes I still prefer this over this is because the compensator they both have six large ports for the brake but there's no regulating of the compensating with this one it, because the compensator and the brake uses the same hole while this one is separated and they could have um, drilled a bigger hole or smaller hole for the compensator now with this one obviously the brake is the least importance to them it does the compensating job first and the brake hole is actually quite small compared to these guys so that's it about uh, muzzle devices uh, my next video will be regarding uh, threading a oversized barrel. So thank you for uh, joining me and please subscribe.